Greetings, church family. If you're following our reading challenge, at the end of last week, you read Ezekiel chapter 38. And this week you begin uh, with Ezekiel 39. And now in terms of content, these two chapters go together. And they describe the mysterious Gog of the land of Magog. A question comes up, you know, what are these chapters talking about? And the more practically, how do they relate to us today? Well, first of all, most commentators agree to the mysterious nature of these references. Attempts to pinpoint the exact historical identity of Gog and Magog have failed to find consensus, though some suggestions are more probable than others. However, in this prophetic apocalyptic context, we should ask, even if they do have a more immediate uh, historical referent, how are they functioning in this prophecy? In order to answer this question, we must follow an important interpretive principle. We are to interpret unclear passages by clear ones. Where else in Scripture are these names mentioned, and how might that shed light on the meaning? Well, in Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 10, we read, and when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out and deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea, and they marched over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were. And they will, and they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. <clears throat> what we see here is that Revelation draws from the battle mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39, where Israel's enemies are being gathered together against them. However, even in the context of Ezekiel 38 and 39, there's a reference to the latter years or the latter days in the context. And th these, these phrases cast the ultimate fulfillment of these things forward to what we know as the last days. And that's the time between the comings of Christ. It's the days in which we live. It would seem that the enemies of God are gathered against Christ and his church right before the second coming, with Gog and Magog symbolizing the wicked nations raised up against Christ and his people, and they face fire from heaven. The final judgment is cast in the imagery of Gog and Magog and their demise in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And there's no struggle in Revelation 20. Christ shows up and it's game over. So that's a lot to take in, but what can we take away practically from all of this? Well, first of all, we are reminded of some important interpretive principles. Interpret unclear passages with clear ones. And incidentally, one of the major uh, keys to understanding the book of Revelation, which is a difficult book, is to understand the Old Testament. Revelation, it's argued, uh, draws upon the Old Testament more than any other book in the New Testament. Even though there's no direct quotes, uh, most of its imagery is drawn from the Old Testament. And then secondly, no opposition can stand against Christ. This should be a great encouragement to us as we face opposition and persecution in the last days. Think about the power and the sure victory of Christ this week for you, for us, his church, and keep reading. God bless.